This is an interview with Professor David Gutzler, who is a climate scientist at the University of New Mexico and one of the lead authors of the IPCC report. I'm David Gutzler, Professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of New Mexico. In, in terms of global warming and, and climate change, those phrases are used by the scientific community and they're also used by the public and media. Uh, when the scientific community uses the terms global warming and climate change, what do they mean? The scientific community uses the terms global warming and climate change nearly interchangeably. Um, the same basic set of phenomena is, um, is meant by either phrase. Uh, at some point, people started to generalize the, the notion of global warming to describe more of what's happening out in the climate system right now. So the current climate change that we see happening involves uh, a large-scale warming that's um, pretty well understood in principle, but that warming has effects that go beyond just a temperature increase, such as snowpack declining and sea ice melting. And so for um, some purposes, um, the, the term climate change is used to capture those other things that are happening as the climate warms up. But in terms of the community's usage of it, there really isn't a huge amount of difference. Um, some uh, uh, skeptics have tried to uh, trump up the difference between the two terms as, as indicating that, that something different is meant, but that's really not the case within the community. Is there scientific evidence linking global warming or climate change to precipitation patterns? Most of the big climate signals associated with increasing greenhouse gases are temperature related. So in terms of the process of climate change, increasing greenhouse gases uh, is well known and well established to increase surface temperatures. But there are other phenomena that go along with that. Precipitation is expected to change as the climate warms up, but rather indirectly as a result of temperature change. And so it's harder to see the effects of greenhouse gas forced temperature change in precipitation. There are hints that the tropics are widening and that precipitation might be getting more intense when it happens and that large scale precipitation patterns might be changing slowly. These are harder things to see in the data in part because precipitation data is rather sparse. Um, and, and they're rather subtle compared to the temperature changes, but there is increasing evidence that we're starting to see some changes in precipitation, I think especially in terms of the variability of precipitation um, in ways that go along and are consistent with global temperature change. When you talk about changes in precipitation, that, does that have anything to do with the extremes that we're seeing in drought and flooding, especially the flooding? Right, as the climate warms up, we expect precipitation in general to be more variable um, and more intense when it happens. So as the surface warms up, uh, the atmosphere above it can hold more moisture. Um, and so when precipitation does happen, there's at least the potential for more intense precipitation. That's a, a well-known um, result that comes from model simulations and there is increasing evidence that we're starting to see that happen in observations. Is there a credible extension of water quantity concerns to water, water quality concerns related to climate? Most of the direct effects of a warming climate and perhaps more intense precipitation uh, on water resources is, is just about how much water f falls out of the sky and where. So water quality effects are indirect, but I think illustrate a really important point about climate change, which is that uh, in terms of the impacts of climate change on society, we really ought to be thinking about climate change together with all the other things that are happening at the same time. So for example, here in the Southwest, uh, we know that in many places uh, groundwater resources are being depleted. 
simply because we've been pumping groundwater at an unsustainable rate. That's not really a, a, a direct effect of climate change, but when you put the two together, uh, the possible changes in precipitation and the changes in evaporation rates that go along with warmer temperatures make the water shortage issues that result from groundwater pumping and the water quality issues that go along with groundwater pumping, uh, th th they feed back on each other. And, and so when we're thinking about policy to deal with climate change, we ought to be folding that in with responsible resource management that includes the effects of other things. Uh, forest management, groundwater pumping, all the other things that we would have to deal with anyway, even if the climate weren't changing. Climate change and global warming tends to be one more stressor that just makes those other problems more intense and occur at a more rapid rate. Can you explain recent concerns about data being used by climate si scientists, um, particularly about the NOAA website. Are, the, are there concerns about that data being used and how it's being used? We need to pay attention to um, uh, data issues all the time. And, and this is a first order concern in the climate research community uh, all the time. So as um, people like me that spend their professional lives looking at climate data, we always need to be aware of how those data were gathered and how they were processed before I make calculations with them. So the, the recent debate over um, uh, NOAA's climate data are, um, are, are legitimate and, and need to be resolved. At the same time, we need to be aware that these issues do tend to get resolved. They're, they're part of the normal process of archiving data and processing data and, and amongst scientists arguing about the results of data. And, and th there's just no way that this particular episode that involved how a revision to NOAA's surface temperature data uh, were archived it, it doesn't affect the, the overarching conclusion that the climate is changing um, at all. And so taking an issue that's part of the standard discussion and debate amongst scientists about data quality uh, cannot and should not be used to detract from the overarching result that has um, come about over many years of study uh, which is that we know unequivocally that the climate's warming up. Are other countries maintaining databases concerning climate? Uh, yes, in particular the um, uh, British government has maintained its own surface temperature database. Uh, it's important to note that all of these different databases are really using the same basic set of actual observations, but processing the data uh, is done independently at various places. And that's a big part of the, the, the way we think of a reliable, important database being maintained. If it's done independently, then we can check reproducibility and that the particular processing of any data set doesn't affect the biggest conclusions that we need to make in terms of whether the climate's changing or not. From your point of view as a client scientist, do you believe there are legislative or electoral remedies that could mitigate or reverse some worrisome trends we're seeing? The, the world community has been struggling for several decades about how to establish an international policy to mitigate global warming. Uh, the, the countries of the world agreed that this was an issue that needed international attention uh, back in the early 1990s. Um, the most recent attempt to try to establish some policy, which seems very promising to many people uh, is the agreements that were reached in Paris um, more than a year ago. Um, and, and that has the potential to 
uh, at least start the world down a path of more sustainable emissions, decreasing emissions in ways that can keep climate change from happening at a dangerous rate. And, and so many people would agree that, that those Paris agreements that were painstakingly uh, uh, agreed upon uh, ought to be followed. And my own personal opinion is that's the case. Um, and, and that it would be a grave mistake to try to derail uh, momentum on the part of the international community by unilaterally declaring that the United States won't participate. And do you have any further comments that you would like to add to the information you've already provided? Um, I'd just say that for all of the discussion about on, on a political level about revisiting conclusions or increased skepticism about whether climate is changing or not um, are largely irrelevant to responsible scientific discussion of this issue. There is nothing that's happened over the past year based on any election that has changed the basic scientific discussion of climate change. Um, the, the turmoil that's happening is completely political. Um, and, and so at some level, scientists continue to do their work. Uh, we hope that our funding isn't terminated for political reasons. But again, that's a, a political decision. And, and there has been literally nothing that's happened over the past year or five years that has changed the general trajectory of scientific opinion, which is overwhelming among people who actually do the research, that the climate is changing and the principal source of climate change presently uh, is, is human activities uh, due to uh, CO2 emissions and, and other greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you.